Hi everyone, this is Duplex. Welcome back to episode three of our tutorial series. Um, I'm down here at the south end of the base, as you can see on the map. Uh, this is the iron line that we set up. Um, I did set up the copper line, as I mentioned I was going to do previously. Um, I placed well, I started by putting 15 mining drills on this copper patch, but actually I've got a few more now. Uh, if I hit control C for copy and drag over, I can see I have 34. So I've got a few extra mining drills there, but I figured since the 30 almost covered the entire patch, I might as well add a couple more drills just to get everything completely covered. Um, so with this patch, we're really only going to be able to run one copper line. Um, but I did set aside space for three more so that we can have four. Um, and I've been asked, you know, why, why four iron lines and four copper lines? Um, I'll, I'll get into all that in a future episode where we discuss planning of the base. Um, but it, it's not an arbitrary number. Um, essentially what I've done, uh, previously is, I figured out how many science packs I want to be producing in this base. <clears throat> and then from there, uh, we have tools that we can use to calculate how much iron production, how much, you know, copper production circuits, etc., that we need to support that. So, um, I will, I will explain all that in a future episode, but, but for now, if you just set up for four and four, you'll be safe. Okay. Um, and then down here on the bottom, I placed another radar. Um, these, uh, if you look at the map, um, I'm pressing M to get to the map, by the way. Uh, if you look at the map, uh, you can see these, this large square, this is the, um, what do they call it? Well, anyway, this is the coverage of our original radar that we can zoom in on from the map view and we can actually see what's going on right now. Once we get outside of that square, we can't see in real time what's happening. Um, we do see the results of the scanning of the radar. Like for example, this, um, this chunk was just scanned so we can see that momentarily, but then it'll fade away. Right. And then when the next chunk gets scanned, which I think will be this one, we'll be able to see that momentarily as well. Okay. But what I like to do is I like to have this full-time coverage of the entire base so that from map view, I can always see what's going on. So we've already started, as you can see, this, this square comes down here, right? So we've already started to expand beyond the edge of our, uh, of our first radar. So I've put a second one down here so that we get more coverage for the rest of the base. And we'll continue to add radar as we expand so that we can see everything. Okay. So I just wanted to explain what that was there for. Okay. So I've got my copper line here. Um, I extended the coal line down from, from where the first smelting line was. Um, and I ran power poles all the way down there so I could place that radar. Um, I put a turret right next to the radar because, um, the biters do like to attack turrets. Um, so I usually make, you know, I always want to make sure that I've got radar coverage there on the turrets. Now let me show you quickly here on the copper line, um, or the copper mine, a couple somewhat interesting things I did. So here I've got, I've got two belts here that are covered by drills on both sides. Okay. So we get a fairly balanced output. Up here, though, um, there wasn't any ore up here to put drills to get both sides of this belt covered, right? So if I had just run a single belt, then essentially I would just have these six drills only filling one side of the belt. So to get it to cover, to fill both sides of the belt here, um, after the first three drills, I just ran a belt up and over and then down again to side load on the, to the top part which you can see here. Let me, uh, I'm just going to press the F key to take out the copper ore from the top of the belt. So as you can see this, this will go out and then, and then side load onto the top part of the belt. 
So that way we have three drills covering each side of the belt, even though they're all physically in a row. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that down here, this mining drill is in contact with this little bit of iron ore. Okay. So that means that occasionally this is going to output a bit of iron instead of copper. Okay. But I don't want that iron getting down to my smelting area. Um, and mixing in with the copper down here, because then one of these furnaces will start to make iron plate and, and then when there's no more iron, it won't produce any copper. So I want to make sure that this is clean and producing only copper. So there's a, a couple ways that you can clean this out. Um, the way that I've chosen to do it is down here, I placed a filter inserter, which is one of these. Okay. So I crafted a filter inserter. And with a filter inserter, you can, you can tell it what you want it to pick up. So in this case, I just, I just selected one of these blank boxes. I selected iron ore. Uh, so now this, this inserter will only pick up iron ore. So anytime a bit of iron ore comes past it on the belt, it'll pick it up. It'll put it into this chest. And then this chest will at some point unload onto this belt where the rest of the iron is going. Um, the other way that you could do it is with a splitter because you can filter with splitters as well. So if I set my output priority to the left side and then I set the filter on the splitter to iron. Okay. Once I clean up that little bit, then you could do something like that, right? So any iron that comes through here will come out on this side and join up with this belt. Um, Either way will work. I went with this method. Um, just because uh, one of the reasons I didn't use the filter splitter is that if, if, the, if the output of the filter splitter backs up, then it can, it can cause problems upstream where it'll, it'll block the whole belt. So that's why I decided just to use this going into a chest. Um, there's only going to be about a hundred and and something, uh, pieces of iron coming down there. So shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So, uh, what I'd like to do today is to start to set up red and green science production. Uh, before I do that though, I want to go and I want to take out that biter nest up there. So, um, I've gathered up a few stacks of ammunition. Uh, I've crafted some repair packs. We'll repair that turret here and I've made 10 gun turrets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on my number two hot bar. <coughs> and then if I press the X key, you'll see that I can swap between my hot bars. The other thing you can do is press, I think if I press control two, no. Or is it shift two? Yeah. If I press shift two, that'll make the number two bar active as well. Shift one to go back to one, or you can press X to cycle between them. All right. So this way I can just press one to put down turrets. I can press two to get my ammo and control, click it in there. And I can press three to get my repair packs. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go up to these bases. As soon as I get close enough, I'm going to put down a couple turrets. I'm going to load them with ammo. I'm going to, I'm going to get close enough to attract the biters to chase me into range of the turrets. And then we'll gradually move closer with turrets until, until the base is destroyed. Okay. So this is what they call turret creep. Right, so you set up a couple turrets. I can hear that worm up there. And then what you do is you just you just start creeping forward, putting more and more turrets. Try not to get killed. Watch out for the worms. 
Okay, and then it'll destroy the base. Whoops. Yeah, watch out for the... <laughs> All right, so here's the thing, guys, and you'll see this if you watch me play long enough. I am I am not good at this combat-related stuff. I can set up good static defenses, but as far as me um, combating biters in real time like that, uh, that's really not something that I'm good at. So, um, so if you're looking for great ways to run around and kill biters personally without using static defenses uh, you might have to look elsewhere okay but in any case that should prevent any further attacks for a while um, I don't see my pollution might extend up there I can't see there yet but uh, the rest of my pollution cloud is not touching any more enemy bases so that should uh, prevent any more attacks from coming for a while okay so let's um, let's pick this up. I'm gonna hit X to get my hot bar restored. I'm gonna pick up these labs because now we are going to start to set up a more permanent laboratory. Uh, and in fact, I'm gonna pick all this up as well. Okay, so we're done with this little starter setup. And we're gonna start to build something with more permanence. Okay, so I've got some stone brick. I'm gonna expand that to four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up two tiles. Let's see here. Because I need to put a steel, a couple steel lines as well. Which we haven't built yet. Uh, I wanted to put steel up here, um, so I need to leave room for that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark this as as kind of the start point of the let's call it the the factory area okay all right so we'll have all of our smelting over here on the left side of this vertical path uh, we're going to have our main bus below this path which i will be explaining in great detail uh, but not just yet and then above this we'll have our production areas okay and there, our first production area is going to be for red and green science packs and that's what we're going to work on today um so uh again i'll get into uh the main bus earlier but um or later but essentially it's uh it's a system of of setting up the base uh with a series of of belts that carry all your raw materials and your intermediate products through the base and then you use splitters and things like that to carry them up to the various production areas. Okay. Um, so to begin with, we're going to have four belts of iron and four belts of copper. Uh, and then later, you know, we'll have steel, we'll have stone brick circuits, all that other stuff. We'll be traveling from left to right through the base. But the first thing I want to set up is one belt of iron and one belt of copper. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that now. There we go. And we're eventually going to have four of those since we have four smelting lines. So I'm going to leave space for that. And then one, two. All right. And then that'll be the first copper. And I'll put an underground there so that we can extend this path and the copper will go up there. Right, and we only need iron and copper to make red and green science packs. Okay, so um, for red and green science packs, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need about 15 or so assembly machines 
uh, to do everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start crafting some of those. Uh, we're going to need power over there as well. So let's drag some power poles. There we go. And that'll give us power in all four corners. And I'll place a light so we can see a little bit better what it is that I'm doing. Okay. Um, hmm. You know what? I just realized something. I need to leave. I need to leave a little more space up here. So let's move this iron. I actually want to reserve space for two more belts. So I leave one, two, and then I want one, two belts, and then one, two, one, two, three, four. So that'll be iron and then copper. One, two, three, four. Okay. So there's the copper, and then iron will come over here. And these two belts, I'm saving space for two belts up here for, for more science packs. And we'll, again, this will this will all become clear later. But for now, if you set it up so that you have two belts, a space of two. And the reason you have a space of two is so that you can bring, you can cross the bus using underground belts like that. Okay, because you need two spaces to uh, to put two underground belts, and then you can use splitters and things. So, so we set it up in groups of four belts with two spaces in between each group of four. All right. So let's start making some science packs. Now, um, I'm going to leave uh, a little bit of room here between my path and my production area. And the reason I do that is because I want to, I want to have some extra room in case at some point in the future I need to run some extra belts or place power poles, roboports, things like that. All right. So let's say... We can use these uh, these production machines as spacers. So let's say I leave. Let's say I always leave a space of two assemblers above the path and uh, next to the path before I start placing production machines. That'll give me six tiles because these are three by three tiles. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place six of these one two three four five six okay and these are going to be for red science packs now the first one we're going to make gears okay because we know that red science packs require a gear as well as copper plates okay uh, and then these other five are going to make red science packs. And what I'm shooting for here is a build where I'm making, we'll call it one science per second. Okay, so for each science pack that we produce, I'm going to see how long it takes to make. In this case, it takes five seconds to make one science pack. So if I place five machines, that means I'm going to be averaging a production of one red science pack per second. Okay, that's the simple version of saying it. Now, in reality, this assembly machine has a crafting speed of 0 0.5. Uh, and that means that it's essentially going to take twice as long to make this. Uh, so to begin with, we're actually only going to get one every two seconds. But if you ignore the crafting speed for a moment, we can just say this is a one per second build. And we're going to do this with all of the science packs. Okay, so I put one gear machine and then five of these in a row. 
My gear machine is fine because these take half a second to produce. Um, so that means that in the five seconds that it takes to produce one of these red science packs, I can make 10 gear wheels, right? Two per second times five seconds. So one gear machine can actually support 10 machines making red science packs. In this case, I only have five. So one gear machine is more than enough. All right. And then what I want to do is I want to get I'd like to set this belt up so that half of it is copper plates and half of it is gears. Okay, so we'll start by having our output of gears right there. This is going to go on the left side of the belt because inserters always place items on the far side of the belts that they're working with. So that means that I would want to have copper on the right side of the belt. Okay, and we can do that by bringing some copper plate up and then side loading like that. So that'll bring up copper plate, it'll deposit it on the right side of the belt, the gears will go on the left side of the belt, and then these machines will be able to get both of their ingredients off of a single belt. Now why do I have this extra belt there? Well, if I don't have that there, then it'll just treat it as a continuation and then I'll have copper plates coming down both sides which I don't want, right? So if you put an extra belt there at the beginning, that'll force us to side load instead of just joining up the entire belt. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a splitter right there, run my copper plate into it, and then copper can continue on down the line to be used elsewhere. And then from here, I'm gonna go up, place an underground belt to jump over the iron, another underground belt there, to jump over these belts and then my copper will come up and it'll load on that side as you can see okay and then we need to feed iron to this machine which we can do here and we'll do that the same way place a splitter and send it up there. And here, we'll put that fast inserter there. We need fast inserters on this machine uh, in order to feed it fast enough. Okay, because we need to get two iron plates in every half second and a yellow, a yellow inserter can't handle it. Um, yellow inserters generally will give you about one item per second and the fast inserters are uh, a lot faster than that. They're twice as fast. Okay. So let's get this powered up. Actually, I'll put that one there to make it symmetrical. Okay, so now I've got copper plate and gears. And then I'll feed my science packs. So we put some inserters there. Let's craft a few more. And we'll throw in a few lights. And I can pick up those belts. Those aren't needed. Okay, so now I'm making lots of red science packs. And we'll send those up a belt where we will eventually feed them into labs. Um, I need to start crafting more labs. So first let me get some inserters. Um, I need some more fast ones. And I'll need to build more labs as well. So I'm going to start handcrafting some labs. Uh, we'll start with, let's start with 24. So I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, and then two more. That'll give us 24 in total. I think that's the right number. Okay. 
Um, so in the meantime, uh, we need to set up the production of green science packs as well. So let's place six more machines. And then in this case, these are all going to be green science packs. Okay, but this way they line up nicely. Now green science packs take six seconds each. So that's why I have six machines making green science packs and only five machines making red. Okay, and we'll set up some inserters like we did before, one in and one out. Okay, and then we'll have a belt feeding these as well. Put some power poles. Okay, now in this case, green science packs require one belt and one inserter. Okay, so that makes things slightly more complicated, um, but that's okay. You know, we happen to need belts and inserters anyway. I've been making belts over here. So I'm actually gonna pick this up now, and instead we're gonna start making belts over there where we need it for those science packs. Okay, so let's pick that up. I'll pick up all these belts. I've now got a ton of belts. I'll grab some more gears while I'm over here. Okay, um, and then the way that I normally do this is like this. Uh, you'll see, you'll see why we do that in a minute. Okay, so we need to make to keep this fed. We need to make at least one belt per second, right? Since we need, we're going to consume one per second. So we need to make at least one belt and one inserter per second in order to feed this. But I also want to make some extras so that I have, since I'm going to be making belts and inserters here anyway, I want to make more than I need for the science packs and load them into chests so that I can come over here and grab extras whenever I need them so that I don't have to craft them by hand. Okay. So let's start by doing the transport belts. As we know, transport belts need one gear each, or one gear for each cycle. Each cycle is gonna give me two transport belts, right? So I get two transport belts every half a second. I only need one per second for the science. I'm gonna get four per second from this. So I'll, if I just set up one machine making belts, I'm already gonna be making a lot of extra. Okay, so this'll be, this'll be just great. So I'll bring some iron up here. Okay, so we'll load one in there, we'll load one in there, one there. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna send some of the belts over there. And then the other belts I'm gonna put into a chest here. And I'll just, I'll set this to 10. All right, so we'll make a thousand belts for our own personal use. And you'll see here when you have more than one inserter on the output. In this case, since I'm making two at a time, they'll each output at the same time. Okay. So that takes care of our belts. And then these are going onto the far side of the belt and then they loop around and go up there to feed all of these science machines. Okay, and actually I can make this a little bit shorter. I can just do that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna make are the inserters. Um, now the inserters, these will produce a one every half second, so they're not quite as fast as the belts, but they're still fast enough for what I need, right? Because remember, I only need one per second. And in this case, I can make one every half second, right? So if I have, again, if I have one machine making inserters, I'll be making twice what I need for the science packs and I can accumulate some of the extras into a chest so that I can conveniently come by and grab them to use to build my base. Now the inserters take iron plates, gears, 
and electronic circuits. Okay, so I'm already making gears here. And I'm getting one every half second, which is exactly what I need to run this. Okay, so I'm going to need another machine to make gears for the inserters. All right, let's clean this up a bit. We'll put those inserters next to one another like that. Okay, so this will feed a machine making inserters. Okay, we'll continue that belt of iron because uh, the inserters need iron plate as well. Okay, so now we'll have gears and plates for the inserters. And then the last thing that we need are electronic circuits. So let's put another machine to make those. This makes electronic circuits, which coincidentally also needs iron plates. Okay, and then the electronic circuits also need copper wire. So I'm gonna need yet another machine making copper cable. Okay, and then we need to get a line of copper fed up here in order to make that. So what I can do is I can just run a second belt next to this belt of iron and we'll bring up some copper. So you can already start to see now why the why the bus design is uh, fairly useful because you've got all your ingredients down here and then you can just grab them off of that line and bring them up here. Okay, so uh, on the output for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an underground belt there with one space. I'm gonna place a chest. We'll put, uh, I'll limit that to four stacks. And I'll put two inserters. Okay, so now since this only outputs one at a time, you can see that these two inserters will alternate. Oh, that's not right, that's not right. Okay, uh, I goofed. Why? Because I need those inserters to go on the other side of the belt. Okay, I can I can save this. All right, so let's do this again. I actually don't need the underground belt. I can just do it like that. All right, so some of these will go into a chest. Some of them will go into the belt. Let me clear off this belt here. Get all those uh, get all those belts off. Okay, so I am going to extend this down further. Actually, let's go down one more. And then I'm going to side load a belt there. And we'll have the belts come out like that. Okay, so that way the belts will load onto one side and the inserters will load onto the other side. And then once we get enough inserters made, that'll start to feed all that. Um, I'm not making circuits fast enough, and that's because I need another inserter there. There we go. Still not fast enough. Okay. Um, one circuit needs three copper cables. And I'm making two copper cables every half second. And this wants to make a circuit every half second. So because of that, I am not able to produce these circuits fast enough to feed this machine. Because I need to make three every half second, I'm only making two. Okay, so what we can do 
temporarily is we can add a second assembler. Right, so we can have two machines making copper cable. And then what I'll do is I'll just bring this belt up there. Okay. And this way we'll be able to get the copper cables fast enough to keep this running nonstop. Now, um, later on, eventually, uh, in, in fact, pretty soon, we're going to be researching a faster assembly machine. And in that case, if I have one of the faster assembly machines feeding into this one, then, then this will work out. But, um, but for now, we'll just have two of these machines feeding this one so that we can keep that running fast enough. And that way we'll be able to make inserters for ourselves as well as for the science line. Okay, so this should be able to run nonstop now. As you can see, it's getting that circuit just in time. And that should make enough to keep all of this running. Okay. So now we've got red and green science packs on a belt. I'm going to extend this belt. And I am going to place... I'll leave a little bit of space. And then I'm going to place two rows of 12 labs each. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'll leave one space, and the same thing down there. Put my inserters. Extend the belt, and then. We just need to power it up. Okay, and you'll see that once we do this, we're going to be getting research done very, very quickly. Let me craft some more lights. This might be more labs than I need. I actually didn't, uh, I didn't calculate how many labs are needed, but I think 24 is a good start. Should be enough to, really I want enough labs to consume all the science packs that I'm producing and no more, right? So in this case, it might be, it might be overkill to have 24 labs. But in Factorio, too much is just about right. Okay. So I'm going to add to my queue automation two. That's going to give us this faster assembly machine. Okay. We're also going to need steel to make that and we're not crafting steel yet. So that's something that we'll have to do, but uh, we'll at least get it into the queue so that we can start getting ready for that. Now I just expanded my base a lot. So I want to check my power. And if I check my power, I can see that we're kind of getting close to our maximum capacity. So now is a good time to add more power. So let's add, I'll add four more boilers and then eight steam engines to run those. And then I'll make four burner inserters to feed the boilers. And I'll need a couple of straight pipes as well. So two and four, oops, let's run the power poles. Okay, and then one pipe there, one pipe there, extend the belt, insert the coal. All right, and yeah, we just doubled our power. Just like that, pretty easy. Um, let's put another turret up here. Okay. Um, and since we just expanded uh, with our labs and our science production over here, we should also put some turrets in that area to make sure that we 
keep everything protected from attacks. Okay, so I'll put one right there. In this case, I'll just control left click. All right, that loads a stack of 100 and then I can control, or I'm sorry, control right click, and then I can control right click this thing again to take some out. So if I do that twice, each time it takes out half. So that leaves us with 25. All right, and then I'll put another turret right there. I'll do the same thing. There, now we have 25. Okay, and you can see that the pace of our research is now going much faster than it was previously. If we press T to open the research queue, uh, that's going pretty quickly. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, in the next episode, we'll set up steel production. Uh, I think we'll probably also set up a line to start crafting uh, stone brick automatically. Um, what I'm going to set up here right now is a machine that will start making pipes for us. Since that's an ingredient in the stuff that we need for power. And I'll just use some yellow inserters here. I don't really need to produce those pipes very quickly. I'll limit that to 10 stacks. That will be more than enough to give us lots of pipe. Yeah, that's fast enough. So we'll start accumulating some of those. Um, you know, if you look at the steam engines, they take five pipes each. And eventually we'll need a lot of pipes for underground uh, pipes and things. So we'll just be crafting some over there. Um, let me actually grab some more ammunition. Okay, yeah, so I've got lots of ammo. And then I'll come down here and I'll get rid of this copper ore that I'm carrying. There's no reason to keep that in my inventory. Let's load it into the furnaces. Okay, so we're making good progress. We've got red and green science production completely automated. Uh, we're also making extra belts and we're making extra inserters. So I can grab some extras whenever I need some. And uh, yeah, we're doing great. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.